Guys, today on K6UDA Radio, uh, I've got one of my this versus that. And I know a lot of guys ask me and ask probably every creator out there. Just got my general license. I just got whatever license. My kids just moved out of the house. I just got divorced. And now I want to buy a great radio. I don't know what to buy. This is my first HF radio. What should I buy? For the last several years, the ICOM IC7300 has probably been that radio that gets most attention and is most selected by new hams and people just wanting to get a second or third radio. But let's face it, uh, Yesu has been coming up strong when it comes to releasing new stuff. And one of the radios that they released in the last, I think, two or three years has been their 991A. And I think that is about as close to a direct competitor to the 7300 as I have seen yet. So today I have for your viewing pleasure, both my 7300 and my club's 991A. I'm going to do them kind of back to back uh, this time on K6 UDA radio. All right, guys, so now it's time to get into this thing. But before we do, if you haven't already hit the subscribe button, please do that now. Doesn't cost you anything. Helps me out insanely. Also, hit that bell notification. I don't know why. I don't know if they're actually notifying you of anything. But winter is coming. I'm going to be doing some more videos now uh, because I'll be stuck in the house between here and studio b and i got a lot of fun stuff uh planned for you throughout the winter all right since we're already in studio a let's take a look at uh, my old standby the ic7300 now i've had this radio for about four or five years now fantastic i have nothing but good things to say about it all right, we're going to start at the business end of this radio. Uh, here's the back of the 7300. And uh, as you can see, it's pretty simple. There's the infamous power in cable, followed by a single antenna input. I have an external antenna tuner, and that's the plug. It has a 9-pin DIN plug, the USB input, uh, ALC, the external speaker, uh, the key in, and that's about it for the back. Swapping the thing around to the front, uh, all the normal buttons that you would have on a modern SDR type radio uh, with the addition of the, um, the little blue thing on the bottom there, that is a uh, SD card. You can use that for a whole bunch of things, and we can get into that later. So, when you turn this thing on, uh, I have mine customized with my call sign. You can too, and you turn it on. I have it set with a very, very clean display. I've got a little bit of everything. I like to have my meters uh, down at the bottom. I have a waterfall on the top. Now, if you don't care about the meters, you can put things up like the audio scope here, uh, which is pretty cool. Accessing the menu on this thing is very straightforward, very, very cool. And uh, you can make the thing look almost any way you want. I really like that. Very straightforward. Adjusting the filters is super easy and super convenient. You can bring it all back to zeros if you want. Uh, changing the filters by the touch screen. You can do gross adjustments with the multi knob and fine adjustments with the VFO knob. 
uh, pretty standard fare, but very straightforward. Now, changing bands on the 7300 is a little bit funky. You have to uh, use the touch screen to do this. You could pick the band, you could pick a split, or you can enter in a frequency uh, with the enter button, and then it brings up a number pad. I would have liked to personally see a band button, but hey, this works. Now, ICOM makes heavy, heavy use of the touchscreen feature on this radio. Uh, things like changing the band, changing the frequency, uh, adjusting the filters from uh, filter one, two, or three are all done on touchscreen. The quick menu will give you things like being able to adjust uh, what type of meter. That's the little meter that's a constant on every screen uh, on the 7300. So you can keep track of what's most important to you. It's a uh, brisk 29 degrees Fahrenheit right now. I think it got down to about 17 or 18 overnight, but uh, we're headed out to Studio B. Welcome back to Studio B, guys. Hey, I guess I owe you a small update. Uh, over here in the corner, put in a microwave oven for my Hot Pockets during contests. And uh, what good would the microwave be without a little refrigerator full of my favorite drinks? Over here, uh, we have the 991A that we're going to be reviewing, well, or that we're going to be comparing today, uh, alongside the K3S system, and a couple of monitors. Up in the top here, uh, slightly new addition here is my old antenna rotor, which is controlling the hex beam, which I put up back on the tower. So I just happen to have a 991A sitting here in Studio B. I wanna thank my club, the <laughs> Magic Valley ARC, for uh, putting this thing here on a kind of semi-permanent basis. Uh, field day worked out so good last year. I think we might do it here again next year. Anyway, let's take a look at the 991A and then we'll come back and we'll compare it uh, to the 7300 and you guys are going to have to decide what is a better radio for you. Okay, starting off just like we did before, we've got a power cable. We have the HF antenna lug on the back. We also have a UHF VHF antenna lug on the other side. So two antennas. Moving right along, we've got the ground lug. Uh, we have a GPS and CAT cable there next to the USB cable. Uh, over on the left-hand side, we have a tuner uh, tuner and the RIDI and data cable connections, external speaker, and the ALC jack. That's it for the back. Very simple. Now off on the front side, we have the on-off switch, a key jack, the headphone jack, and the microphone jack on the left-hand side of the radio. Now on the right side of the radio, you've got all the buttons and switches that you would normally have, including the band switch, but it doesn't work exactly the way I would have liked it to. Uh, but the you'll notice the menu and the F key. Those two buttons are very reminiscent of other Yaesu radios like the FT5 and the FTM400. So if you're a fan of those radios, this will be super familiar to you. Now, Yesu does make use of the touchscreen technology, but not nearly as much as ICOM has instituted it. As you can see, Yesu did have a band button, but then you have to use the touchscreen to go ahead and uh, select the band that you want to operate on. 
The mode button works exactly like the band button. Press the mode button, get into the sub menu, and pick your mode. Uh, I will say that Yesu has brought in the ability to run C4FM over HF, which is very, very cool if you haven't tried that. So the main menu or the main setup menu on the uh, 991A is, I would say it's more of a pain in the butt to get through. It's harder to uh, discern what does what uh, and where it is. You have to basically go through this whole list of menu items to get to what you want to get to. Very reminiscent of the Elecraft way of doing things. Now, one of the things that I like about the Yesu is the fast tuning button. Uh, this enables you, without having to change the tuning increments, uh, be able to really move through a band quickly. Now, like I said before, uh, that F key on the uh, right hand side or in the middle of the screen and the menu, very reminiscent of my FT5 and my FTM 400 kind of does the same thing, but it does a lot more. But this video is not about going through every single setting on this radio. So just suffice it to say, this button does a lot of cool stuff right up front with a button push. Now, how does it do on transmit? Does excellent. Here I'm on 10 meters and I'm going to put one call out. Kilo 6, Uniform Delta Alpha. Now, in case you can't tell, the guy that I'm talking to is in Japan. Kilo 6, Uniform Delta Alpha, you are 59, go ahead. Uh, thank you for the 59. You're also 59 here in the state of Idaho. And here's one of the great things about 10 meters. Guys, if you're a technician, you could get on here and do exactly this with your technician license. It's good here. Okay, 73. Thanks for, uh, thanks for the contact. Seven degrees outside. It's one cold mofo. Oh yeah, and I have the blast furnace going in here. Heats it up really, really nice. So I decided, okay, let's get up. Let's go out to Studio B with the 7300. We'll put them both together and we'll look at them literally side by side. The things I won't endure for you. So in physical appearance, the 7300 is probably one half inch bigger than the, uh, than the Yesu across the front. Now in the side view, you could see that the uh, ICOM is a bit taller, but it is shorter in that uh, depth dimension. Now the business end of both of these radios is very, very similar, pretty basic uh, for a modern HF machine. Moving back to the front of the radios, the SD card that we talked about earlier. That SD card is used for things like voice memory keyers, CW memory keyers, uh, saving configurations, updating the radio, uh, a whole bunch of stuff. Now at the top of the screen, I've set up some voice key messages. Those are also stored on that SD card. Now the ICOM also gives you the ability to uh, measure things like SWR across an antenna. Now changing bands on both of these radios is actually very similar. The AC uses a band button which brings up the band selector on the screen. On the ICOM, the entire process is done by using the touchscreen only. 
Now, as far as the waterfall display on both of these, they're both good, but I like the iCom a little bit better. It looks more organic. It feels like it's moving faster, more real time kind of thing and gives me more options. So one of the things that I really love about the uh, Yesu radio is the fact that it is a true shack in the box. Uh, HF, six meters, uh, two meters, 440, the ability to do C4 FM over both repeater work and uh, HF. Huge, big deal. And if you haven't tried things like C4 FM, uh, which is not wires X uh, over HF, I invite you to do that. There's a huge group that does it on D Star, and um, the 7300 would pick up a lot of points, in my opinion, if it did D Star, but it doesn't. Oh well. Now, where the ICOM shines, in my opinion, is in its use of touchscreen technology and that more organic looking. Uh, screen that it uses. It has a more natural feel to it. I like the uh, waterfall better on the uh, on the ICOM. I really enjoy uh, the menu system on the ICOM. Everything is contextual. It's not like you have to go in, hit the menu, and scroll through 150 items. There's, you know, sometimes. 40 or 50 items in a certain section, but it's a lot easier. It gives you a place to go look at uh, before you, you have to start scrolling through a bunch of menu options. Now, my personal opinion, looks do matter. And for those of you that say looks don't matter, you got ugly wives. And if you're the guy that leaves that comment, you know your wife is ugly and you're just insulted about it. <laughs> the Yesu right now at uh, HRO, Ham Radio Outlet, is on sale for $1,230, but it's out of stock. The ICOM 7300 is in stock, $1,250. I'm calling both of these radios fantastic entry-level radios. And I know a few years back when I called the 7300 an entry-level radio, some of you guys absolutely lost your minds and said, oh my God, that's not entry-level radio. Guys, if uh, you're still pushing 50, 60, 70-year-old technology on these new kids that want to come into the hobby and you expect that that they're going to accept um, a dial-up rotary princess phone, you're killing the hobby. You're doing a disservice. Uh, this hobby is about technology. It is about being forward thinking and what is the next best thing? How can we do it better? Anyway, uh, I hope I helped you. Maybe make a decision. Maybe figure out which, uh, which way to go is better for you. And again, I haven't been able to get my hands on one of the newer uh, Yesu radios. Maybe one of these days I will. I know that they've made some more advances. The 710 looks very interesting uh, at, again, about the same price point, probably another competitor to the 7300 705 realm. Anyway, guys, uh, that's it for me. Uh, I'm Bob, K6UDA, and I'm out of here. 7-3.